There are many different types of empanadas all around the world. Today I wanted to show you a recipe on how to make a perfectly light, crispy, yet filled to the brim, beefy empanada. An empanada is basically thinly rolled out dough that is then stuffed with savory or sweet fillings that are then either baked or deep fried. Everywhere in the world you can find them from Spain to Italy to Indonesia to the Philippines to various different places in Latin America. I've had big ones, small ones, crispy ones, dry ones, saucy ones. There are tons of different ways that they can be done, but me specifically, when I want an empanada, this is what I look for. I like a beefy filling, something really juicy and saucy that is soft and intense. Secondly, the dough needs to have tiny little airy bubbles on it, carry lots of flavor, and be quite thin. I really don't like the bready ones. So basically crispy on the outside, but we want that inner dough to be nice and tender and kind of like almost buttery, but without the use of butter. Let's get to it. You can do all of this the day before cooking them. In a mixing bowl, 450 grams of low protein or pastry flour, something that sits around 8% works really well. A half teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of baking powder, two tablespoons of sugar, and just mix everything together. The secret to a good empanada is the type of fat that you use. Now, if you use oil or butter, obviously you're gonna get very different results. That's why a lot of pie recipes actually call for animal fat in the form of lard. What's great about lard is that when it actually is quite cold, it does stick together quite well, but you can use other types of animal fats. I like actually using duck fat or goose fat um, in pie crusts. It just gives it a nice flaky, thin, um, kind of light texture, but in the same time, it just makes it more savory and rich. Mix this in with your flour mix, with your fingertips. You are trying not to melt the fat, so just incorporate it slowly like this. At the end of it, it should just feel like coarse sand. For our wet ingredients, beat one egg with one teaspoon of white vinegar and 125 mils of really cold soda water. I agitated this bottle way too much. Slowly incorporate the wet into the dry and work it until it forms a shaggy dough ball. Then move it onto a floured surface to combine it further. By the end of it, it should feel like a smooth ball. Now different types of flour will have very different absorption rates when it comes to liquids, so it's really important to finish this by feel. If it's too wet, add a little bit of flour, and if it's too dry, you can add a little bit more of that soda water or a little bit more fat if you want. Once it's nice and smooth, you can go ahead and cover it up. It's really important that it's nicely covered um, so it doesn't dry out in the fridge, and that's gonna stay there for at least 30 minutes up to overnight. For the filling, I wanted to make a beefy tomato-y stew that I knew would be perfect for this. So when making the filling, I like to make them really flavorful and intense to a point that if you were to eat this with like a cup of rice, it would be way too rich. But here, since it's such a small package, it'll be just right. Start off with a beautiful beef shank, season both sides with salt, sear it in some hot oil to give it some color, then place it in a pot of boiling water with some salt, garlic, and onions. This will simmer away for three hours. After which, you'll let it come to room temperature, take the meat out, strain the broth, put the broth back in the Tupperware with meat, and keep this in the fridge overnight. The next day, you'll have some great gelatin and meat with some floating fat. You can skim some of this fat off if you want. Take out the meat and just shred it to pieces. For the vegetables, we're just gonna use some potatoes, carrots, red bell peppers, onions, and garlic. Get a pan out and fry off some garlic and onions for about five minutes on low heat before adding in some red bell peppers, carrots, and your potatoes. Add in your crushed tomatoes, some water, and some of your gelatinized broth. We're gonna let all of this simmer with some soy sauce, raisins, fish sauce, and pepper to taste. Let this simmer gently for about 20 minutes before adding the beef. And why not that leftover bone, just to develop more flavor. Cook this for a further 30 minutes until the sauce thickens out nicely. Now this can't be too saucy or it'll be impossible to put in the dough, which is why the fat is so key. Bring it to room temperature and then place it in the fridge for two hours so that it becomes harder. Take out your dough 30 minutes before you plan on using it. Roll it into a log, then cut this log into two to three inches sections and roll them into balls. The pieces you're not gonna be working on, make sure to cover them right away so they don't dry up. 
If you have a tortilla press, I suggest you use it. If not, roll it out as thinly as you can without breaking them. I got mine comfortably down to about three millimeters. I really wanted these to look like impressively stuffed, um, so I really overfilled them. Um, so I put as much as I can basically in the palm and then just tried to figure out if I could get those two lips to kind of meet. And then it's really up to you if you wanna go ahead and be very delicate and crimp it together. I do not have the most delicate hands, so I just wanna close it whatever way I can. If you're even lazier than that, you can go ahead and just flatten the dough um, together and then use a fork to make sure it's nice and sealed. So the most important thing is that it is sealed so that the oil doesn't actually penetrate the inside of the empanada, making it really soggy. It's really important that it's closed so it stays nice and crunchy. Um, in the exterior and you still have a nice tasting filling and not an overly oily filling. Before frying these, I recommend covering them with some plastic wrap and then placing them in the fridge for at least 20 minutes. It'll just give that dough that extra time to rest, which I think is crucial to get a really beautiful result. Now bring some peanut or just some regular frying oil to about 350 Fahrenheit or 175 Celsius and try to keep it there as best you can only frying in batches of two or three and never overcrowding the pan. You know they're done when they have a nice golden color and some puffy, blistered skin. I know it's hard, but you'll really need to chill these out a little bit before biting into them. Okay, moment of truth. Time to cut into one of these bad boys. They look so good and crusty, and they have those like little bubbles that I was looking for, like those dimples. Kind of looks like a lot of pimples or like a skin infection, but on the empanada. I don't know if that makes you hungry. Um, but that's exactly what I wanted. Um, I wanted that kind of level of crunchiness, and you can see, if you look really closely, I took some macro shots, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but you can kind of see some like waves and flakiness in the dough, which is really cool. So we're gonna open one up. Time for the big reveal. Nice and full. You can see some separation between like a chewy, kind of like interior and crunchy exterior, which is exactly what I wanted. And there's not too much, like if you look at here, let me point this out with my knife. Look at here, the filling actually fills it up completely. You don't have a lot of these like empty cavities, which I didn't want, but I wanted this separation between crunchy dough, soft dough, and you've got air pockets within the dough. That tells me that the dough itself is nice and light yet I have different textures to play around with. I love that sweet, savory kind of mix I'm getting. Not too thick, not too bready, just the right amount. That filling, I mean the beef, you get kind of like that pull, but it's also like just soft. And what I love is that collagen that we had with the sauce, I think kind of just melted a little bit. So you get a nice oily bite, but it's not like cloyingly oily. It's not sticking to my lips or anything like that. Mmm. If you guys love empanadas and you've never made them at home, these are fairly easy to make and really tasty. Mm. 